got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Feeder. Just the way I'm feeling. XFM 104.9. I love that. Carl, you're, you're, you're panicking. You've just remembered a song from your childhood, and I don't know what you're talking about, but, um, I'm going to give out a number. Please take this number down if you can help, Carl. It's 08700 800 1234. Right. I'm, just... I'm not, I'm not that bothered. We were talking about a track from the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Quinn. Yeah. And it was on the same compilation. My dad had a tape in the car, and the tape was always on in the, in the stereo thing in the yeah. car. And... I used to sit, sort, sort of sit through all this stuff I didn't like, but knowing that coming up soon was a song about a, a monster with purple eyes. It a wasn't Puff the Magic Dragon. Eyes. It wasn't, it wasn't that. A monster, there must be something else about it that give people do, a clue. Do you truth. remember a chorus or a few lines? Um, it says something like, it was a one-eyed, it had big eyes, purple, and it eats people or something. The it big eyed purple eater, wasn't there a song called something like that? I, the I, big guy, purple. And it was a hit, was, was I'm it? sure there was. A song which is something like the Intergalactic Purple Year or something like that. It's some like, it's a novelty song. Rubbish. <laughs> what, by the Bonzo Dog Yeah, it's that sort of thing, yeah. I'm sure well, if you know what that. car- look, 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 the telephones have gone mad! Yeah, well, we'll find out in a bit. I mean, I'm not that bothered, I'm not gonna buy it. It's just that we were talking about songs and that. It'll be good to know who it was, but- Yeah. yeah. Right, what? Rockbusters. Okay, right. now how long, where did you oh, get to the phone? Yeah. What, do you want to just answer well, that? Well, that's the phone, so just answer, answer the phone. Yeah, see what it is. Just see someone's... Hello? Hello, hey. mate. Alright. Yeah, uh, next song. I don't know if it's by, or is that what you want? Um, that's the bit I want, well, what, really. What's the name of the song? Well, you know that how it goes, it's like, Born night on a door, now the beep Yeah. Oh, yeah. I d sorry, I don't think you've helped much, though. You, you, can't, you can't remember what it's called or who it's by. Well, no, I mean, I know the tune. Well, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. But he's it done well. Yeah, he's done well. He's given up his spare time to call in and sing us a song. Don't diss him. Rick, I'm concerned he's just only marginally remembering it more than Carl is. It was actually in, um, I think it was in the Blob. No, it was in, in, in something like the Blob, actually. I think Steve McQueen was driving away and it was it, it, running in a secret. This yeah. is so very familiar. See if it, thanks very much, mate. See if we can get a title off someone. Uh, and, uh, XFM. Hello, uh, yeah, I know the name of that tune. Go on. Uh, it's the, boy, is it the Purple Eyed People Eater? Yeah, that sounds about right. And really? Who's it by? Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just at work and, uh... Who is it by? It came to my mind. Do you know who it's by? I don't know who it's by, mate, sorry. This is not enough information. I wouldn't phone in we if I didn't ask the Lewis, but we asked him just what the tune was. But I want someone like Paul Gambaccini to call in. He knows what, you know, what chart right, okay, position it got okay, to. Okay, okay, right. Well, right. Thanks I, very I don't much think this is enough information. Well, That's well, two people. The thing We've is, barely got if any you know the title, we can put it in the internet, can't we, and find out who did it. Yeah. That's full of Brilliant. information. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you very much yeah, for calling I, I don't know why they bothered, frankly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, so... I, I, no, I mean, I just think if you're gonna bother to call in a radio station, you're have the facts. You have so all the facts, you have? He hasn't got the facts and he runs the radio station. He doesn't run it, they keep him here like a mascot. He's like a pet, isn't he? They have him running around the office. God. The Flaming Nips. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good morning. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna own up straight away, I've done very little work towards this show this week, I'm a bit <laughs> you busy. You surprised me. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of- Thanks for being honest though, Well, Rick. no, I don't, you know, I don't want people to go, oh no, that was a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not gonna be that every week, yeah. so it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So, right. you know, you Whereas normally- You'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work, Carl. You might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. But I mean, because I know Steve's done nothing towards it either. So the onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know, essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, for you know, people on buses, 
to, uh, comedians, like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day and that, you know, it, it, they go, uh- People on buses? I've never been on a bus you for You haven't been years. on a bus no. for like twelve years, yeah. have you? Yeah. <laughs> People <laughs> on buses. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I just know well, the they, idea of no. you being on the bus. Well, the idea of you well, handing over your fare. Well, They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? 20 pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um, wh one, one adult for Terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know, they do that thing where, like, if they're interviewing kind what of is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone pence? famous. No, it's uh, quid, isn't it? It's always, a quid. They always say, how much is a b pint of milk? And that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, because well, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff. I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were you were always lazy. Because people always say to me, like, "Oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious." Who know? says that? Well, no, they say you know. No, they, no, who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it. <laughs> I swear to God, he came up. He said, uh, "He said I was watching an interview with Ricky. He said he's not a nice piece of work." I went, "Well, I mean," he said, "No, I've got friends like that." You know, just, and it's like, they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute, you went, Well, nah, well, well two things, you know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. So. <laughs> <laughs> he had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, well I say a list, a petition. It, it wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? It's yeah. a great tune, but I'd love to hear a next yeah Mock Turtles can you dig it remixed by Slim yeah yeah XFM 104.9 Ricky Gervais Steve Merchant mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to dear, do going on. stuff to happening? talk about and that what's been, going, uh, on? What's been going on oh um before you came in, oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the <laughs> <laughs> an experiment. Yeah. Well, I, all I know is, as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area. You were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray. Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but I interested. Explain more about the experiment. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate, right? Before I either caved his skull in, or right. you know what I mean. So you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could like vibrate. But you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on. <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Cause Carl, it's like could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, you haven't said a word. So it's had a bit of an effect on me. Really? <laughs> <It's> still, <laughs> still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We right. were talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be all right. Yeah. So, okay, can we recreate that later, maybe I towards the end of the show? Just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound. He said, well, he said, well, he said, talking about time out. I said, well, something about in time out, and he went, ah, uh, yeah. Do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it. I get it every week. Yeah. He went, ah, uh, there's no point, though, is it? He said, because it's like a f telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> When I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were, and there was forty-two pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you? Were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can think I'd, of I'd to do. I've been working. It's when we did the show from you know XFM did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah, you were in sat in your hotel day, room, sat in the room waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're, we're all going gonna to meet up. We're going to meet up with you know with Simon. So you, you thought I'm not going to switch the TV on. I'm not going to read a the magazine. The telly was on. Nothing was on. I wasn't impressed with anything that was on. So I'm looking <laughs> around the room. I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> 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 He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them and then um, looked around. There was a bible and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up and immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Macintosh. Yeah. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads Return of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. Forty-two pages of Macs. Did you count how many pages there were? Yeah. Did and you then, Did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally count? No, I count counted. It? I counted. Right. 
And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. If someone could tell you uh, approximately how many uh, sorry, names I, they what, get on one page. How long did it take you, this whole procedure? What, well, the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's, it's just counting two pages. pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, and what did you luckily. do, once you digested that information, what, what did you do with that information? Did I you I tell people it, what you I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Along with the biscuit, I love to get in his head. I imagine it's a big warehouse, and there's l lots of partitions for weird stuff like bo kids born with tentacles yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, th uh, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, and <laughs> yes. you go in there. You say, "I'm looking for." The he goes, "Hang on, hang on. I know where they. I've, I've put that somewhere. Hang on, a minute, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on." Is this on. the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, it's <laughs> yeah. not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I oh, you know Scotland the shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um. The, uh, the what's her name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And uh, <laughs> I think that's every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Well, we were talking about that airy kid in the woods, mm. and um, did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll uh, told Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me. Come on, tell it now. No, right. well, no, no, no. Oh, well, I reckon we should keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. That's, right. that's got him. Right. So we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've got, that's got the audience. We've got we've got rockbusters again this week. Okay. Yeah. We've got. Do we need them? Yeah. What, right. are you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right. Uh, good I, one. Can't, looking, I can't think of a reason to keep them. Looking no. into that, well, I, I sort the matter out. That's okay. coming up. <laughs> Excellent. We've got. Um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. He phoned me up today. Uh, yesterday it was. He knows he's been researching, like educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, "What do you want to know about?" I don't know. He said, uh, are you interested in space? And I went, yeah, yeah. Phones me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But uh, no way. He said, is there anything else you want to know about? I went, all oh, right, uh, I went, anthropology. He went, what's that? I went, study a man. I sent a man. He went, like what? I went, like, our roots from, from caveman through and all the, he went, and I said, Australopithecus, uh, Neanderthal. He went, well, you know all that then? I went, no, I, he went, right. He went, don't you want to know how a lung works or something? <laughs> how a lung works. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how a microwave works. He went, I know. I went, no. I said, Fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things, under the banner of, um, colon then, educate me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do it again. Colon then, educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. colon. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's a little heading. You're gonna be learning three things sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you want to, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. Come on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't. Little task for you. I think it can all go wrong, do you know what I mean? Of course it can. So can sit in your little room moaning about nothing happening in the world. You know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky because nothing had happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net. He said, all I found was a dog in a car wash and a parrot and a vicar. Uh -huh. right? I'll tell you what, there ain't what? much more going on this week. We're well, talking, sh well, listen, me and Steve, yesterday, we took a day off to prove you wrong, and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about, and they're amazing. So there are things out there, or is it just, ju but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, yeah, and discovery. Do, do. Don't, don't, yeah. the, the yeah. fact is, is strange than fiction. You don't have to revert, revert to oh, sort of like yeah. God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like, the last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right, it right. was a good Friday, there was no news. There was nothing going on. They had to put a music video on or something on the telly because there was nothing going on. <laughs> play a record. We're going to play some classic tracks today. This is uh, Debaser. I, I know what you're getting at <laughs> with the uh, with the educating Ricky, but it, you know. Let's see. Let's see. You've got uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with different stories. You take your pick, and I teach you something that yeah. did happen. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is, um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. 
<laughs> I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. <laughs> you've got, uh, <coughs> you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> enough is enough. Wow. Well. But it's changed to enough is an anus. <laughs> yeah. And okay. you've got, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got, <coughs> will it, will it be a bloke? Oh, oh no. Will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> what? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> Will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so there you- there you three stories okay, today. Okay, sounds exciting. Okay, well I'll have so will it- will well, it like- we're gonna play a record now, Rick, surely. Yeah, yeah and, okay. Uh, and come back with- Sorry uh, about the crowds and the big baby. Alright. It's available less than room. I'll think of a title for him. Right. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> three stories, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Looking Enough to is a nuss. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, we'll have that one then. That one? Yeah. Right, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yep. Yeah, of yeah, course. Sorry, I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a fella <coughs> who, um, he, he used to do palm reading. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, do you want your palm reading, he was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've, I've you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. That's, so if you look at that... my bloody hands, Reg. <laughs> well, that's that hod carrying. <laughs> did I ever tell you? That? <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? <laughs> Go on. Go Is on. there any more yeah. to the story? Well, that's about it. I mean, it'd be, <laughs> we used to do like I think the head teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something, and sold people's on. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> he offered the kids <sighs> of the school. Uh, he said, "Right, all all sit at your desk and put your hands on the table," and everyone did. And he walked past me and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> was good. that? Yeah. yeah good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, was so these- Yeah, these, was, well, what did you do? He just sort of walked around and went, you all right, uh, do you want bourbons or die Ha ha! I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd right? love to see- maybe Especially the senile ones. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, no, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just in a link, they just go, you know, they, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right, and it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, all right, and you go, yeah, not too bad, you go, what do you think of London? Crap, isn't it? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it, in excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better, but. Mm -hmm. So what are you going for then? Oh, you've picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this fella- So there's- so there's- there's palmists going round the streets- Yeah, he's going round and- Randomly there's a lot, trying they, to give palm losing, readings. They're losing money. Right. Hand over fist. Yeah. All right. So, um, they said, uh, <laughs> he, he's- what he's done, he's- he's reading people's, uh, bottoms now. <laughs> Sorry, whoa, 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 you just, you just, I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader, that wasn't making money, so now he's going up to people in the street and saying, can I see your arse? Basically, yeah. So from, from, from being a palmist to an arsonist? Well, uh, they, they just, that's, that's what he does. He said these same sort of lines and that that you get on your hand, you get them on your, on your bottom, <laughs> and, uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert, really, or making up as he goes along. No, that's- that's it. That was that. So, it, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, can I have a look at your arse? <laughs> can I read your arse? You'd- you'd drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. If he went up to him and they said, oh, I'd rather you didn't because I'm a labourer. I've got bad fingernails. No, anyway. that's why I've seen- that's what the- a lot of labourers, they're showing their cleavage, you think, but actually they're having their arse right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. really a lot of- that's what it is. And then, right- So, is not... that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. But then because That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke <laughs> who reads arses. No, but You're then, a mentalist. But no, but what then, are you talking about? But then, do you know, like, now and again I come up with a little jokey line. I thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. Yes, <laughs> let's play some Phil. <laughs> let's play some Phil. <laughs> right, so, uh, You we better get that out of here. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. will it like fellas or will it like women? 
Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I've wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out <laughs> that, um... <laughs> they. <laughs> yeah. Scientists, scientists. Oh, have, yeah. Have found out... 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams are gay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that was like, wool it, that's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. Um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's- that bunch there is a- is a gay bunch. They looked better, they just had more pride in their appearance. And, uh, yeah. and the other ones, you know, the straight ones, and then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you gotta do. And they took the brains out of, of all of them. <laughs> just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that they've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's gonna work on- on males. On- on, like, males and females and, like, humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so if, go on. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they don't, they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. <laughs> so you can go to the doctor and- <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay. C c is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you, yes. A little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the, uh, you've well, got, what, you've what got a little bent cell there. Well, that's- that's why they did it, anyway. I don't understand how they- how they could differentiate which were straight and which were gay to begin with before they then gave it to the scientist. Wasn't that what the scientists figured out? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, how could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it's the genetically pill? determined. There is one- <laughs> there is- there is- there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I- I, I don't think it's as easy as, um, uh, pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink sort of like blob in there and going, right, we've taken the guy out, now he's gonna go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although, the, uh, uh, the homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So... You knew that, didn't you? So that's- that's that one. I mean... <laughs> I just like the idea of the farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm yeah. So I'm thinking maybe yeah. he's gay. Is that- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the fact they can- uh, okay, uh, that, that one's- <laughs> that one's <laughs> a big fan of Sophie Ellis Baxter. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, yeah. They were dark- they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. how they- Which one- yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, put on, like, Barbara Streisand <laughs> and see which ones sing along. <laughs> That's it is rubbish. What did I find out? <laughs> what did you, say, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other other stuff in the week that didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had the- This numbers. must be mediocre stuff. <laughs> this must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, or it might be dubious. Go on. There's um there's a woman in Ireland yeah. who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um she always saying to him, you know, oh, when 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 are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, Oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that. Do you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah, Unless you have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, he was like, we'll do it in time, in time and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So... <laughs> That's extraordinary. And <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah. Yeah. Well... She was so shocked, she was so hair, shocked her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going yeah, to it the just ground. Fell out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's that rubbish. That's rubbish. Next. You've also got, um... What's it's weird, isn't it, Rick, that the stories <laughs> that we made up are more plausible <laughs> yeah. than the facts yeah. he's actually giving I think us. we tried too hard. <laughs> I think we tried yeah, too hard. That's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's hair fell out when her husband came out and so said, let's get married then. Yeah. Oh, you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, then, here's a good one. Go on, then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um, <laughs> she was over there, and apparently in the markets- they, 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 they sell lizards. Oh, go on. Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you. And, um, then she gets to the airport when she's going home, she's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So, she puts it on her head. On her head? Wears it as a hat. <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat? Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine, you know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a lizard hat. Um, <laughs> everything's going well. She gets off the plane at Manchester Airport. Um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? 
she goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, he said, I've had this with me all, all journey. And they said, well, you shouldn't have done. And they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That educated me. <laughs> right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling <laughs> lizards yeah. back as some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say, lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> <Exactly>. twat. <laughs> Not <laughs> at the customs <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what else have anyone, we Anyone else? didn't quite make it? <laughs> Anything we, to declare. We've, oh. <laughs> I've, got, I've, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> we've got an old saying, one if you want that. Go on then. Are yeah. these ones, sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list? These are ones that didn't make it, Oh, yeah. right, okay. Because I always, I always get more in than, than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is, uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. I've got a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the dick machine, which- <laughs> The big dick. <laughs> the big dick, which- Yeah. Uh, now, this is interesting. It's, I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitised to it. Yeah, exactly. Or he's given up. Or he's just given up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Let's play the tune. Let's come back with some more Kyle's, uh, Yeah. I don't, you... I don't want to use the word facts. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's right, yeah. it appropriate. Want, uh, he's got more screen testing now. The camera's ready for you. Yeah. Right, so let's get out of this house. We've got uh, we've got one more. Go on, uh, educating Ricky too. Go on, and quick then. I need I need educating. Right, uh, don't rub it too hard. You'll get a rasher. How was he going out with Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah, um, Darren Brown, who uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts forty pounds down on the table. He says, "I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in." Uh, let's say five times out of five, you know. So I have a, a pound coin in one hand. I put it behind my back. I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions. By doing various well, he doesn't things, ask, but he just goes, "Now you might have done that one. You might do the same again." But then you're an intelligent person. You're probably not where he goes. So it's in that one, and he does it every time. Yeah, five it's it every incredible. Time. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, and wow. I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown, because well, your dad used to do this trick. You well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um, how old were you? Uh, I don't know. Probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now then. Uh, uh, so he used to play it, and and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's all you've got to do. <laughs> that's how he did it then. Yeah. That's so to Darren catch Darren out. So ca no, to catch Darren out. It was a bit out. different because he did it with golf balls. But <laughs> but to catch it. Darren out, <laughs> Carl told me, Rick, <laughs> he did it with a spud. To catch Darren out, <laughs> yeah. The hand which hasn't got the coin in, just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> Just make it, just like extend it slightly, so it's slightly larger, and that'll catch Darren out. He'll never be able to stop <laughs> that. That's how he did it. Or you... just put put a pound in each hand, okay. and wind him up. Just go, no, you're wrong. You yeah. are, you are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you do, do you uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Do you did you that? did you keep going to the doctor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on. Right. You know how that's done. You know he's not actually taking your nose it's off. It's his thumb. Go it on. It's his thumb. Go Last on. one. Yeah. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. It's been a mess today, isn't it? <laughs> what do you mean, it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of, it's not tight, it's not tight like it generally is. <laughs> um, and she'll be going away with this, thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to the show, she knows it's a shambles every week. Go on. Yeah. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, years ago, w with, uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd, um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right. Right. So, what they used to do, uh, uh to make themselves look- Rub their face in pigs? Well, they got, they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the, like, you know, the- pig fat and a bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks. Bricks? Yeah, mm -hmm. house bricks. Rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick, mm. and then put the dust on the face. Mm. And the, the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face. Mm. And um, they'd look well under the lights. And that's that's where the they'd same- They'd smell great as well. Yeah, well- They're Lovely, everyone likes to smell of bacon. Mm. No. But, so that's, that's the old, uh, ham it up, that's I where like it that. comes from. I like that. You know, if, if it's true, I'll start, I've no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So, what have you learned? Nothing. <laughs> you Absolutely 
Sod all. You've got your humming it up. Yeah. Um, rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! And, uh, At last, the, thank fella, God. the fella who can hand read, um, an arse. <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> Have you just tuned in? <laughs> you are a maniac, Carl. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them it'll be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these you down, Carl? I don't, uh, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life. Right, well the clues were, I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. You got that, four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good, well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd wanna sit in the sun or not. That was C, they were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan, right? A bunch of them charlatans, right? What, what, what do you mean? What's Char- <laughs> What's Charlie? No. No, sh it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it, right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it's my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not cutting, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> one. Yeah, which would have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 what is the answer? We'll roll, we'll roll well, the what is the answer? Over. Jamaican fella what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was Frida Payne. <laughs> Frida Payne? Frida Payne. Frida Payne. Frida Payne. That's awful. Carl, Frida what's... You've got to write these down next week. This is I'm right. Sorry, you are, right. Uh, you're I, the producer. I, think, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's doing not stuff an the... excuse. That isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't. We have. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. You, you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, it's better not to try than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> do you see what the point? We've got. We don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah. And, and you're, you're not meeting them. You're for think of that. You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God. some Day by Bruce Springsteen from uh, his new album, The Rising, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Former just phoned in and said uh, to Carl, uh, stick up for yourself. Don't listen to that merchant. He does my head in. He's so arrogant. I don't think I'm arrogant. I think I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. I just think I'm sort of objectionable. I don't think it's arrogance. I think no. it's sort of nastiness. Yeah. I'm just not a very nice person. <laughs> but believe me, I'm not arrogant. I think I'm pathetic. <laughs> uh, and we've had a lot of emails, um, s saying, could you bring back White Van Carl? Oh, yeah. Which is that section of the show where we ask the questions that the Sun asks someone else. Random punters. Yeah. Uh, of Carl, but sadly recently they've got very politicised and very kind of, uh, basically a little bit depressing. So, uh, there's not really anything appropriate, but I have trawled the papers looking for other questions posed in other sections of the, uh, the sun. Good idea. Um, I was just looking here at the Dear Deirdre section, which is the sort of problem page. Uh, I don't know what your views are oh, on, are on this. Oh, I'd love to see Carl. Oh, God, can we get him a job? Just ask, ask, oh my God, that would be amazing. Right? Well, here's one. I'd like to see uh, your view on this, Carl. I'm a happily married 42-year-old woman with four kids, yet I've developed a huge crush on pop star Darius Dinesh. Yeah. It sent my hormone levels through the roof, yeah. and last night I woke my husband up at 4am for sex. We've been married for 20 years and he can't believe his luck. Recently I've been having- I wanna- sorry, I wanna go to a- I'll stop you there, why are you telling me? <laughs> uh, Right, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Recently, I've been having erotic thoughts about Darius, morning, sure. noon and night. Yeah. I haven't felt like this since I was a teenager and mad about Donny Osmond. <laughs> My husband is amazed at the change in me. We had sex twice last night and again this morning. Again? Uh, why are you telling me this? <laughs> yeah, go on. He's just boasting. This is not a problem. <laughs> There's yeah. not a problem What's here. the problem? No problem, just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> Thanks very much. I watched Darius on TV last night and when my husband came home I dragged him into the kitchen and we made mad passionate love. Right, they've done it- they did it then, twice last night, once this morning, that's four times. Uh, five to five times she's mentioned it so far. Yeah. Um, she's doing alright. Uh, my husband- this is- this is a great bit. My husband thinks it might be his new moustache. <laughs> Or that I'm going through the menopause, but you I know You were thinking different. of growing a moustache, just to think of changing luck like with the ladies? I love the idea that's what he thinks it is. He's telling his mates in the pub. He's you should grow with these. Me. Grow the with old these, Tom right? Selleck. Five times in the last <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours. Hooray yeah. for sexy Darius. So, um, what do you make of that then? What, uh, 
What are your views on that? Well, Hold on though, if that bloke is reading that paper, that <laughs> narrows it down it's a bit. It's gotta be, yeah. Uh, who else uh, d did he know? His <laughs> wife likes Darius, he's had sex five times that night <laughs> and he grew a new moustache. <laughs> he's thinking, I wonder if that's, I wonder <laughs> if that's <laughs> me. Maureen. Yeah, go on. But what's your concern? Cause she, I'll tell you what her problem is, she's worried that, um, you know, the reason that she's now kind of overly excited and she's, you know, having this great sex with her husband is because she's actually fantasizing about someone completely different, younger. She's having these wayward thoughts, isn't she's a bit concerned about that. What's well, your concern? What, what, what are your thoughts? I reckon she's gonna start shoplifting soon and coming out and not flushes. <laughs> go on. Just, um, they're both happy, aren't they? He's getting what he wants. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's happy, I'd say, yeah, whatever, get on with it. Do you think that she could, she should confess? Um. She wants to be honest with him. I, I wouldn't, because not, not that many fellas like Darius. Right. So, <laughs> if, if you're sort of thinking, oh, she'd rather have him than me, I don't What do you think Darius work. would think of this? Uh, he'd, he'd probably be happy with that. I mean, if, what if, you do if you said in there- What would you do if you got, got loads of phone calls, right, from, yeah. um, women going, Carl, whenever you're on the radio, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Your voice makes me- I'd say, right, well, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, just in case anyone is doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do to sort of like egg him on a little bit to help him out? What do you think? What sexy what, things would you say? What do you think is your quality? What do you think people would find, you know, pretty horny about you? Is it your sort of mank wine? Do you think that? Just, just say this. London shit, isn't it? I that I think. Say that, but you know, <laughs> London. It's not that good, is it? Like oh, I think you've done it there. So. So that's Say something of, quite sort of sexy though. Say something like, you know, well, I love to love you. Say well, something I sexy. Say that. No, yeah, say yeah, something no, sexy. Susan answers to me, you know, do you love me? I go, yeah, you're alright. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I know that's true. Yeah. I know that's true. That's, so, that's brilliant. But because one of the things that Deirdre says is that she's, she's wondering if uh, this marriage is going a little bit stale and needs to be freshened up. They need to give a new spice, a new spin to the marriage. What would you do? What would advice would you give? To spice up, you know, something that they've been married for quite some time. Get them, get them, I think get Darius, all Darius things, get David Snedden's new video <laughs> on the telly. Uh, what do you reckon though, Carl? Just, mm. just treat them. Do you know what I mean? Just surprise them now and again with stuff. That's oh. what I do. It's what you, you've got those condoms, didn't you? That you got two for So, hang off. on, what? You've never done that. What? You've surprised Suzanne with what? You know, I've like, uh. <laughs> you stood behind the door and shouted at her. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some, no, some Don't drop the jelly! <laughs> Yeah, you know, just just the usual stuff. There was some free chocolate delivered to work the other day. I took her a bit of that home. Nice of you. That's really thoughtful. She didn't like dark chocolate, but I said, well, it's a thought. <laughs> so I had it. I had it. But um, you know, you often benefit <laughs> from any gift that you give yeah. her. The chocolate, uh, the meal, the condoms. You yeah. always, there's always something in it for you. Yeah, there is. I love the idea. She's so got bored with a Christmas present now, though. <laughs> what the condoms? Yeah. Or the food that she ate. No, they, they condoms. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's got tired of filling them with water and throwing them <laughs> at the passing kids or putting them on her head and inflating them. I love the idea of asking problems. What do you think of, uh, erectile problems? You know that Pele advert, he goes, be careful, we haven't got erectile problems, call this number. What would you do if you're impotent? What would you do? What's the advertising? <laughs> Just saying, like, you know, if you can't, you know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Why have yeah. they got him doing it? <laughs> well, well, he used to, you know, he used to be able to keep it up for hours, <laughs> the ball, and they. Uh, yeah. What would you do if you- To advertise that? No, if you suddenly couldn't get, you know, what would you I do? I don't think it'd bother me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're 30! <laughs> what is that? You? You're talking like you're an 80 year old. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? You've you sort of been there, done that now. <laughs> it's like the boxing and the dancing that I did. It was good as a kid, so now it's like, you know, take it or leave it. Play it, play it. Play it. Play it. Play it. Play it. Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. Alright Carl, you calm down now about science. Oh, I'm just, it, it just does me head in a lot of this stuff. I mm. think I would've been better off sort of growing up in the 1940s or something. Why? Yeah, well, there isn't as much science going on, people just live, <laughs> didn't they, for the moment. So you'd, what I mean? you, well, what if you'd had to go to war? What? what Alright, maybe you'd... 1945 then I'd be happier. Just after the war, <laughs> just that bit after the war and... Before they start what, age? What, what, what year would you want to be born? When was the war over? 45. Right. 46 then. But there's be rationing. There's rationing for another 10 years. 56 then. Just 
But there's a lot of science going on. Oh, it's forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it, it just annoys me all the messing about. They're always messing about with stuff, and I sometimes think, is it doing any good? Is what I mean. Um, mouse with ears, mouse with monkey's testicles. They're messing about with a mammoth now. Go on. Well, they're just saying, well, they're, they're, they're managing to knock one together. <laughs> <laughs> and you just think some some scientist somewhere. Right. Just hey, Andy, around. Andy. No, but it's just. Uh, do we need? Do you know, I mean, we've done it before about the do we need them thing. The amount of creatures and insects and that that are knocking about. You got that caterpillar that I mentioned walking about. It doesn't know where it's going. Get rid of them. The mammoth. The world's busy enough. It's crowded. It's overcrowded now. How, how much room are they going to take up? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why are they doing it, Card? You know, you've not. You just all you know is that they're, they're trying because, to muck around with because they can. Because that's all it is, isn't it? Because they can. They're messing about. Someone's yeah. being paid to do stuff. What else are we here for? If not to try stuff out, what else are we here for? What do you mean? Well, what are we here for? Just to enjoy life, isn't it? Well, well that's like some scientists enjoy knocking a mammoth together. No, but don't don't worry about the mammoth. It died out. Maybe it died out for a reason. Why didn't Noah save it if it was if it was important? Because Noah, that's, that's not that's, 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 that's what do you mean? Noah's not true, is it? Well, I don't know. There might have been some truth in it. What what truth in it? That he put two of every animal that existed into an ark. How big was this then? Why didn't they eat each other? Yeah, I know. I'm not saying. Imagine they'd... the noise, Carl. Yeah. No, trying to get there's, a bit there's, there. There's points to that where I go that didn't happen because where could he have been? Where there was a hamster and an elephant and a, you know. <laughs> A, a crocodile. Where was he? Do you know what I mean? But none I, of it's true. What bit do you believe? What do you mean? It got a bit wet. What? What? What are we talking about? The mammoth or the? No. No. What? What is up with you? No. It's just that we uh, had no, a lot. No. Seriously, have you got brain damage? No. You, it's just that we had a lot of topics going on there. I just don't know which. You no, know, we were talking about. about Noah. And then you suddenly go, oh, I, I, I know it was. Where did we? What? With a mammoth or Noah? What? What you did, none of it's true. What, uh, think of it. Who to, uh, oh, God. Think of the first thing. Build an ark. Build. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I just, just clarify, what's an ark? It's a, it's a big boat thing. Right. Yeah. I just, I've never had any experience of carpentry. Just street. build a big boat thing. But I don't, I'm not really, I don't make Just have a go, don't worry, you'll be all right, I'll make right. sure it's all right. Uh, but what, once I've built that, I mean, yeah. how big should I build it? What am I Very intending? big, it needs every animal, two Ooh, of every animal, go there. on, every animal. I'm in the boat building, fair enough. Like, make it, I told you to make it big. Right. Don't worry about the fish, they can swim. Okay, but so what's All the, the birds. Like, get the flightless ones though, they're drown. Get get the flightless ones. They would not the penguins, they're flightless but they can swim. But all other animals I should be writing this down. <laughs> 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 oh. why, why I mean, wouldn't you have took that opportunity to go right, you know, forget the uh you know, whatever. Man you the jellyfish didn't need to get in it, did it? But but there's other animals where you can We go, don't need to be here. No. Because Carl is actually having a little argument with his own head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you remember that comic strip, The Numbskulls? <laughs> yeah. Where there's loads of people in there doing different stuff, that he can hear them. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes his own mind puts him off. <laughs> yeah. Like just then, he has an argument with himself and it puts him off. <laughs> right, what's your question? I'm just saying, don't mess about with a mammoth. Whoa! Good. Okay. Well, what a platform. It's good. You know, we've got a radio show. We've got our own radio show. <laughs> people are spending money to advertise it. People are actually bothering to listen. And you, oh. the, 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 the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth is, "Don't mess around with a mammoth." Brilliant. Great. No, but just just going back to you sound just like Bob Geldof. Oh. oh, I can't be bothered with this. He's trying to say what? What can't you be bothered with? Just because I think I've got a good point. What? Don't mess around with a mama. <laughs> what? Or, or that's anything. not a point. Don't put your daughter on the stage, missing work. Well, what are you talking about? It's just that I think there's too many animals knocking about. I mean, I know you love your cat and what have you. Waste of time, though. What do they do? <laughs> well, they frighten you. Well, yours is mental, though, isn't it? He's sitting there and the cat right behind him and he nearly shot himself. Well, your cat is crazy. It does go from it. It loves because it's got claws, <laughs> big old claws. Of course it? they have. It's a cat. Yeah, but though most cats don't come leaping at your ghoulies every time you sit down <laughs> with a lovely warm hot cup of tea. Aren't they pointless, though, Steve? 
Well, I've, I've always had a problem with pets, generally, the idea <laughs> But pets. cats the most. I, I was saying to Ricky about, I don't know why, out of all the animals that Dick Whittington could have took with him on his journey. Again! Yeah. Forget the cat. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Well, okay, well, okay, okay, you've got to walk to London because the, the streets are paved with gold. You can take any animal. What do you take? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cat because it would keep wandering off. You do double the distance. <laughs> Try to get it back. Come <laughs> here. They don't listen to you. It's point, I just can't be dealing with them. I agree. You don't get enough affection back from a cat. Oh. A dog, it loves you, it can't get enough of you. But cats, they're very, they're very snooty. Well, they're cool, aren't they, cats? They're cool and independent. I like dogs as well. I like all animals. What would you take with you? What, if I was Dick Whittington? Yeah. And where's he walking from? Like, <laughs> I don't know, wasn't it Bristol to London or something? I don't know. Uh, Again, it's a bit hazy. This isn't well documented. But did, couldn't he, I mean, why is he taking a pet and not a mate who... <laughs> I'm not interested. For the, I try and learn and you don't help. Right. I haven't really had time to check it out this week. No, been, you're joking. Been busy. Ooh, been busy. I hope it's not stupid. Um, goes back to 1908 and the person saying it's, you know, it's a good story and that, and I'd be surprised they haven't picked up on it yet, right? <laughs> uh, the Olympics, right? Mm. Um, in 1908 in <laughs> London. <laughs> Apparently it was meant to happen in, in Italy, but it was cancelled. Don't know why, right? And it happened in London. Mm. Anyway. 400 metres, right, it was meant to, uh, <laughs> there was a fella who was, who was gonna do the run, right, and the favourite to win it was this Bulgarian guy, right, who right. was like a new Right, okay, uh, these, these are the few things it cannot be. One, he injures himself so a monkey steps in and wins. Uh, two, he does a drugs test, it turns out that he is a monkey. <laughs> um, so if it's either of those, right, I'm gonna go mad. So anyway, so the fella, right, this, this favourite, everyone's putting the money on him, thinking, yeah, he's gonna do it, gonna Is he hairy? Nice little, is this bloke hairy? So anyway, so the race happens. Yeah. And everybody's lined up, ready to run. And you know, everyone's saying, yeah, he's gonna win, he's gonna win. And suddenly, a bit of murmuring going on, people going, oh, what's going on here? Mm, right? he's eating a banana. <laughs> and oh, well, there's a fella, just... there's a fella in the lane next to him. Yeah. Right, he's going up. Who's that? He doesn't look familiar. Oh, Christ, Carl. Chico. Right. Doesn't look familiar. Who's he? Yeah. You know, weird. What's, weird, going, weird, on? what's going on? What's yeah. going on? What's going on? Yeah, what is it? What is it? Or who is it? I mean, I'm not what is it? So they go in. <laughs> so they say, well, he might not be that any good. Do you know what I mean? He might not be good. He might. It's just a bit short, and he's, 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 he's only three foot six, and he's hunched over on his knuckles. So, I didn't uh, realise it was fancy dress. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't think he's going to be any good. <laughs> so, so the race starts. Oh, he's putting his finger up his ass. That's weird for runners to do that before a race. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Race starts. Yeah. The fella that no one recognises wins it. People go, what, what, what's gone on here? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We had yeah. our money on the favourite, what's gone on? Who yeah. is this guy? Yeah. Anyway, he stood up there, right? He's, he's looking well happy. Yeah. He's lifting the trophy and everything. Right. Okay. right. Long arms, long arms, that trophy's higher than- So God. anyway- He's so only three foot, but the trophy's nine foot in the air with those long arms. <laughs> so it's so I'm suspicious, go on. They had the, they had the picture in the paper the next day. Sure. And everyone's going, yeah, he's, he was fast and everything, but- Quite hairy for a run. Oh, for f- I'll tell you come what, on, no. come quite, on. quite hairy for a run, because normally they shave themselves, don't they, to s make them faster and- No. They're going, How did he manage it? It's really hairy and that. So anyway, he wins the stuff, he walks away with a cup, the people who are in charge of the running, or like the, uh, the Oli Olympic committee, look further into it, turns out it was a chimp. Right, keep talking. Right. No, don't keep talking. Shut, Shut up. Shut it? up. This is monkey news. If you can't handle the news- It's news from 1909 and I haven't heard about a chimp winning the Olympics. <laughs> right, be quiet. What happened there then? 400 metres, right? Now Don't the thing is- Don't talk shit. The Please, only thing was, Ricky. it took so long for the Olympic committee, right, to find out that it was a monkey. It was going man- it was like going, like manic. It went into loads of races, it was picking up loads of like- NO races. SHUT UP! Right? It became a celebrity, it was doing, <laughs> it was doing endorsements on TV. DON'T TALK SHIT! Uh, it said, uh, he managed to win the right. same race four years later in Athens because- How did he get to- But it's, it's a joke! They're winding you up, Carl! Weird. It's not weird, weird it's in- it? right. I do not believe it. Well, that's okay. That's- so. there's only three of them to go then. Right, because we're probably all leaving in four weeks time and that's the end, I am- I've got to get onto a sort of mainstream radio station because I don't think there's any other sort of tin pot place like this, is there? No. Um, so I'm gonna clear up my act a little bit. I've got an album from the, uh, Capital Radio Library, um, and it's the best, um, punk album in the world ever, so if Capital's listening I can- I'm just gonna show that I can do a mainstream 
I'm gonna play a classic song and I'm gonna right, announce okay, it yeah, right yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, If you get a job on, on a decent station, you'll take me with you, will you? We're a pair. Brilliant. So, uh, okay, here we go, right. If anyone's listening, just to show that I can do mainstream radio, okay? okay? Well, that's all. Okay, let me just. Well, you're getting no, nervous, no, no, you're okay, nervous. Okay. So, come on. Shall I, shall I get a mic no, okay. and do it? It's alright, it's alright. Okay. Well, that's about all there is time for today. You've been listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Across the way, K Man Pilkers. Uh, we're going all the way back now, a classic song from the late 1970s, and this is Devo with Mongoloid. <laughs> Listen, yeah. do you want to do, uh, do you want to set up Songs of Phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, if you've not heard the show before... I thought then... we weren't doing this this week. I, I thought, thought we, we weren't. No, we'll, we'll do it once, right? And then next week's the last one, so we'll do Rockbusters. Leave, leave yeah, that might up. be the last one ever, depending on whether Carl decides to come back yeah. in October or not. Exactly. I'm bored. Right? I told you I'm bored of it. Why are you bored with it? I get bored quick with stuff. Yeah. I told, I told Suzanne the other night, I was lucky she was. I haven't got, not ri got rid of her yet. She's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Things. You put, did you put on her soft music though first, <laughs> of didn't you? You didn't just like start getting that around her. Yeah, you, you're know, the you, of wine. you know you're a very lucky girl. Sorry? Well, I usually get bored with you and that. Yeah. Oh, do You're lucky you haven't pissed off. Yeah. Do you want to open the champagne or what? Well, she was God. annoyed the other God, night. what's that on your ear? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pigeon shit, aren't it? We walk into the pictures, right? To go yeah. and see, uh, Bruce Almighty. Sure. Why? And, uh, just something to say, innit? Yeah. So you were you were trying to sneak in the back. <laughs> so uh, on the way, cutting across Leicester Square, uh -huh. and uh, those fellas who sell roses, he comes over. Do you want one? Do you want one? So don't do that. She's allergic to them, right? So so he'd go away. Yeah. She get all annoyed about that because she's not allergic to them. Well, she's not allergic now, but I, I, they're about three quid each. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of that guy is not that she really wants a rose, it's that you're willing to spend three pounds on her. Taking us to the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> How much was that? That was eight quid each. Mm. Did yeah. you pay for it though? But Did didn't you, you ever, if I, if I know you, you had her dressed up as a small child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me you, and my son, please. Or you've made us sit on your shoulders and wear a long coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen, songs of phrase then. <laughs> you oh. paid for it to go in and then you went and had a pint while she watched it. <laughs> yeah, there's no point in both of us seeing it, but tell <laughs> yeah, me about tell it. Tell me what you? it's like. Oh, right, songs of phrase. So let's Let explain what songs of phrase is. Right. You do it. Okay, oh, really? Um, if you think that Carl is bored with life, then you will be even more bored <laughs> once you have heard this particular quiz. The gist of it is that Carl has taken a well known phrase well, or saying. No, I'll stop me there. Not oh. a well-known phrase. Something that he said once. On this show. Yeah, probably. And he's somehow comp uh, compiled together a number of different songs which have somehow <laughs> built up that particular phrase or sentence. Um, if it's anything about Chinese people, Philip Bailey will be involved. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, let's hear it then, Carl. Right. All right, I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't is. know what that was. This is appalling. I don't know this what is appalling. that is. Carl, Carl, I do not know what that is. What is the phrase? I just was saying last week about everyone's raving about Galileo. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're not. No, that sounds they're like not. a sort of B-side from yeah. the Buggles. Everyone's raving about Beyonce and uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're, people are going pop what, idol. What are you into? Galileo's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forget it. Forget it. No. <laughs> Placebo, song for Carl there. That's special needs on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton. We were doing songs of phrase. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, God. So, what is this phrase? What is the phrase, Carl? Last week we were talking about Galileo. Right. And I just was saying, <laughs> years ago, I can't remember now, when was it? When was he doing his thing? End of the 16th century, I think. Right. And he was messing about, trying to find out about speed of light or something, is it? No, he did lots of he did lots of stuff going on. All I was saying is Gravity, back then, yeah, surely yeah. everyone was saying, "Stop messing with that, make us a telly." You know what I mean? There was other things that people would have been happier with. Sure, back then. Like they, yeah. Like they didn't so know. the phrase is the phrase exactly is what the well known uh, phrase is what. Uh, Galileo. Uh, well, it goes like this, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So it's Galileo's stop talking to me talking about, about science. science. Make, Make me, me television. television. 
Make me television. Yeah. So you email in with, with the bands and that. Brilliant. <laughs> right, let's uh, that, that, that is rock bottom. Of course I mean, it the, is. the well known phrase being Galileo's doctor with me about science, make me television. <laughs> As a well-known <laughs> phrase, is the one of the weirdest things I've ever... Forget jizz out of windows and things like that. That is the weirdest thing I've heard on radio as a competition. Can we have that one next week? <laughs> um... Okay, well, here, here are the prizes. If you, if you think, Rick, that the, if you think the quiz has hit rock bottom, wait till, wait till I, I tell you these prizes. Yeah, no, brilliant. Um... Oh... I know that um, we're very much pushing new music on XFM and it's an alternative music yeah, station, yeah. so you'll be pleased that we're giving away, now that's what I call Music 55, <laughs> featuring the likes of Busted and uh, Daniel Beddingfield. Brilliant. Uh, you really know how to cater to our audience, don't you? The best dance album in the world, that includes um, DJ Sammy, Scooter, <laughs> and uh, Liberty X on there. <laughs> so look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, this is not so bad. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, a live DVD of a, <coughs> pardon me, a performance uh, at some, <coughs> pardon me again, but... <coughs> anyway. <coughs> <coughs> that basically sums up the prizes. So, uh, I won't tell you the rest, they're all monotonous. But, uh, anyway, <coughs> I think those crisps, Rick, have gone down the wrong way. <laughs> or, although I was eating goulash earlier. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So, anyway, yeah, that's that's some of the prices. <laughs> and you can win some tat. So if you can identify these artists. It's a well-known phrase. Galileo, stop talking to me about science, make me television. <laughs> <laughs> just it's appalling. Bit easy this week, I think. I those, yeah. Play a record, Carl. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk for pictures. Uh, answers rushing in, we should point out, for the quiz. Most of them agreeing that uh, it's pointless. Um, some people have called it, it's Songs of Phrase, of course. Um, some people have referring to it now as Songs of Arse. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, more than appropriate, but you'll be pleased to know that it's ending this week, and next week we've got the return of the even more pitiful Rockbusters. For the last one. That's back for the last one. We'd perhaps also need your petitions to Carl. If you want us to stay on the air, then you need to petition Carl, giving good reasons why he should stay, why this show isn't boring, or rather why he shouldn't be bored by it. I mean, you're bound to be bored as listeners, but... Obviously, uh, he's running out of steam now. What, 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 what are you fed up with? You're just fed up with, uh, in general, are you? I mean, you want your Saturdays back, do you? Just want a bit of a life back, that's all. But, but you don't do anything with your life you when you've got it. Why don't you do this instead of, like, your day job? Can't. It's more important than my day job, innit? That's what earns the company money and that. Know what I mean? Well. So. Why don't you do, why don't you do a regular show, then? Sack someone who's, you know, quite I frankly don't, don't not good in the way. I've done that. I did that years ago. What done do you mean? It, done it. Told you, I've done a lot of stuff. Boxing. Done. Tick. <laughs> Dancing. Done. No, you turned out, the place was shut. <laughs> yeah, but... Dancing? When did you do dancing? That's when he, t when he went and said, I want to do dancing, and he went along to the, the place and it was shut and that was it. And he said, I didn't do it anymore. That's not doing it, is it? Boxing, he had a fight with one lad, then the lad beat him up and he didn't go again. <laughs> Oh dear, it's pathetic. Well, anyway, yeah, so this uh, is basically our penultimate show. Next week's the, the final, and uh, we're all looking forward to that enormously. Yeah. But uh, that may be it forever then, and uh, this, this, you know, all for one, all, all, you know, one for all, all for one. The Three Musketeers, gone forever. Yeah. I, for one, will be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, You've got something on your air, you know. Monkey news? Well, I was going to say the winner. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, come on. It, uh, someone got all of them, didn't they? Well, okay, play it again then. This was Songs of Phrase. We did this The well known with. phrase is Galileo, stop talking about science, make me television. Galileo! The most convoluted, banal quiz on any radio station ever. I mean, I'm including Moyles, Chris Evans, do you know what I mean? Simon Bates. That's worse than anything they ever did. Apparently, uh, Channel 5 have bought the rights. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, anyway, what were the answers, Carl? We had Queen in there, Altered Images, Thomas Dolby, yeah. uh, Beatles, Aretha Franklin. And, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, extraordinarily, Tracy and John Burton from Colchester and Essex got all of those right. Why they would want the prizes, I've no idea, but good luck to them. They can enjoy those, uh, at some point. God bless.